After shredding our sail in a storm last summer, it took us quite a while to get a new one from Hong Kong all the way here to the Dominican Republic. Now that we've got it up, in this episode we are refurbishing our battens, and there might be some other boatyard shenanigans, as we get Temptress ready to sail again. Well, scrapping this uh, old sail here, taking some good little bits off, I'll use somewhere. But um, I thought I'd save some of the cloth and we could use it for something. I'm just tearing it up now to throw it away. I can rip it with my hands. This sail was way farther gone than I thought it was. Um, I'm really kind of glad everything happened just the way it happened and we have this new sail now uh, because this would have just given up on the way to Panama. We have drop cloths now. And we have drop cloths. I was hoping to make like duffel bags, but if I can tear it with my hands, uh, it's too far gone for that. I think it's dead. <laughs> We spliced it. That's why it's hard to pull through. I don't want to splice, so I'll just cut that off. I'll never know. It didn't look like we just tied it up. Well, I never knew. Well, we got our sail on the boat, and uh, I'm gonna put it up one more time to take the battens out. I need to adjust the length of the battens and some strength, and we've just got some broken battens that happened during the storm I didn't know about. So, that's my project for today, but I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk just about some of the details I've seen. First off, uh, I think all in all, I did a really good job. Headboard seems nice and reinforced properly, and as you'd expect, um, this was nice. Uh, years ago when I had the other sail done, I had this idea and I asked the sailmaker about it and he's telling me why I don't need it and how it's silly, but he did it for me because I'm paying him. And apparently now it's a feature that you can just ask for. It's called an over-the-top leech line. This is the leech line and for you non-sailors, um, it's if you pull tight on this, it keeps the back edge of the sail from flopping when it gets a little old. But uh, if you pull too much, it hooks it in, so you want to be able to adjust this tension. You do this with this leech line, but on Temptress, the leech of the sail, the end of the boom, is out over the water because it's a 25 foot long boom. So I run the leech line from the bottom up through a couple blocks, and these are way too big, but they're not going to hurt anything. And they're all metal, so the sun's not going to affect them. I like that. And then down the other side so I can control the leech tension from the base of the mast. Anyway, that's, uh, I'm all pretty happy with how they put the head together. There's very nice little reinforcement details that honestly the other one didn't have it and it never was a problem, so it probably doesn't really matter. Uh, everything's being controlled in nice little pockets. Uh, you'll see when we get to our first batten how ridiculously overbuilt they made that. And um, there's uh, two tapes over the leech. Um, I don't really know the, the the need for two of them, but I guess one of them is on the sail and the other one is just over the leech line. Um, or maybe the leech line goes through both of them. I can't really tell. But I, I like the idea. As long as they can keep the, the shape nicely, we won't know that till we sail, but it looks really good. Uh, having two here will just add a little more strength to the weakest part of the sail and uh, also chafe issues and stuff because our sail with the long battens actually hits the backstay. So uh, chafe on this area is important. Though we're in the ocean now, 
We might sail for 50 hours to get someplace and we might tack once. So uh, it's not like when I was in the Puget Sound where you just tack in all day. Okay, let's raise it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the batten. Okay, we're at the first, oops. We're at the first batten. The other end of the batten has a special car and either they don't make them anymore or the sailmaker just couldn't get their hands on them. So I took them off the old sail. They're all metal, they're in great condition. They'll outlive five sails, so no problem. And I just had to hot knife some holes into the sail and actually bolt them on, strangely enough. Uh, the leech line has to come outside of its pocket there because the batten goes through the space. And they've gone to the effort of sewing in a piece of uh, probably vinyl tubing uh, for the, the line to go through. Um, Honestly, I think that was a little overkill, but it, it looks nice. And if it ever becomes a problem, it'd be easier just to cut it off. So I don't think it's a problem at all. And like I said, looks nice. I'm sure that's a detail that sells some sails. I'm in a great position here because I've had a sail on the boat for a very long time, really too long. It was very worn out. And I know, at least on this boat, what wears out and what doesn't. So when I see things that are obviously overkill, I can kind of realize that they're overkill. But I appreciate them. And, you know, it's a good idea for them because I just took a little labor and, you know, it's done in Asia, so that's not quite as expensive. And it looks really nice, these little patches I'm referring to, things like that. Um, one of the goals today is we're going to take out all the, the, the battens. I'll show you how the pocket works on the next batten. But, um, they Velcro in, and then they come out of here. This one is the right length, but I'm going to reinforce it a little bit stiffer on this end, just because I like it. I might not. This one's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think I might leave this one right in. I think this one is just right. The others need some attention. Here's how uh, the batten pockets work on probably most all full battens. Uh, they've made this little tab and it's hook and loop and there's hooks on the inside of this and then there's this little pocket so if you use something I usually use a flat screwdriver but they came with this tool if you just shove this in there it gets it all the way in there as tight as you want it and then when you pull out the tool it can hook and loop itself and then to recover it you just pull on this real hard so I'm gonna leave this batten in. I think it's just about perfect. The others aren't. So the others will come out and they're gonna to have to get some work done on them. Well, let's go a little higher. Okay, we're at the second batten now. This one I am gonna take out. You'll see why in a minute. This one's the right length. Um, uh, it's a fairly light batten material, very flexible, and it needs to be to be able to do the curve uh, the sail requires, but at the end you want it nice and stiff. So I reinforce it by taping on another material. Now I didn't have enough batten material and I used a piece of teak decking. <laughs> so this is a teak batten. The problem is, I'll show you on the other side, during that storm these got beaten up terribly and the batten broke a lot. So I'll put something else on there and tape it back on, but the same length. Two more to go. All right, going up. Okay, I'll pull this one out. This is the worst one. This one I've got set just a little tiny bit too long. So I'll make a reference line for myself that I'd like it that long. And I'll pull it out and you can see what this one looks like. This one seems to have gotten the worst of it. Yeah. 
This is a much thinner batten. I replaced it recently. Uh, went to a sale maker in Florida, and this is what I got. They weren't very expensive, but it's it's too thin, and it's very fragile. I'd have to untape it to show you, but it's all delaminated in there. And on this one, what I think I'm going to do is untape this piece of heavy batten I've got on here that's extending it, and actually lay fiberglass. Now, if I could buy another piece of this, I would, but apparently there's none in the Dominican Republic. So I got to solve it somehow. And I mean, it's fiberglass. I can make fiberglass. I can't make it unidirectional and everything, but I can certainly make fiberglass. And that's what I'll do. And then we just have one left. There we go. Okay, let's look up here. This batten is much too short. It doesn't go all the way into the car. So we'll have to get the other end set and then I'll measure this distance and we'll extend this batten just a little bit. And that's it. That's the fourth batten. This isn't a sail problem at all. In fact, every measurement I've taken of this sail and putting it on the boat and seeing how it fits, it's precise. Uh, you know, that things don't have to be down to like the quarter inch. I think they are. I mean, everything's exactly right. This is short because the batten was extended with another batten always and taped on. Um, that piece that it was extended with has failed. So I just don't have it anymore. And again, I have to do something to extend it. But I measured for what the batten should have been and they made the sail, like it's a mirror image to the sail we drew for them. Uh, very happy with this. a quarter inches longer than it is. Well, starting to rain, this has been the problem here. We're doing this between wind events and rain events. But uh, it's the last time up, so I'm gonna put sail down, zip it up, put her awning back, and then I've got however long, got lots of time to get the battens all in order and put back together.
driver from down. I don't think that's, I don't think a whisk is going to do it. That's paste. Yeah, Davey's got a whisk. We're going to try and make it work. It's, it's like cottage cheese. It's my job to make sure how the pipe is popped up with energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got eight cleared up. Oh boy. Even if you do, I don't think I want to put it on the wood because it's the only wood we have. But we have epoxy to prime it with. Yeah. Well, if you don't want to do it, then there's no point in making a mess. Yeah. I personally couldn't get it wet, but I only used like you're doing. Well, I didn't wisp it last what time. What do you? I mean, doesn't look like it's already kicked. Like it can't ever be proper primer. No, I think it needs mixing. Oh. Okay. You can squeeze it into paint. Yeah. All right. Do you want another glove? No, it's some more of the same. Yeah. Oh, bottom of the can is leaking. You've cut a hole in the bottom of the can. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so what are we calling this? A yeah, disaster. Yeah. What you doing Clark? Well we're gonna do a little batten work. I had said that the battens were in great shape because they're actually fairly new. I had to replace them just a few years ago and my wife Emily said what with all that tape? Well it turned out under the tape they're not in such great shape. And so wait, wait wait what are you saying? Were you saying my wife was you were right, right? Though she had absolutely no grounds to be right. She and more right. importantly I was wrong. <laughs> so I love you. <laughs> I I'm taking every bit of batten type material I have on this boat and gluing them together, but I'm going to make super battens. They're going to be exactly what I want. And what you want in a full batten in this situation is actually a fairly flexible, smallish batten that gets really stiff at only at the very last edge. So it can conform to the shape of the sail and support the leech. And that's what it'll do. So the last two to three feet will be really stiff. I'm all done with all these. Now one of the battens just got beaten all the bits. So I'm having to do a lot of work on that one. The other ones I'm just putting little extender pieces on and such. For those of you who want to know, this is Cabasil and System 3 Epoxy. I use that or I use this stuff that's cheaper. I, I just have this open. Uh, it's used to make ultralight airplanes. And supposedly the FAA actually tests their batches. <laughs> but I like the two to one kind. I'm, I'm not a big system of the Gudgeon Brothers West systems because that's five to one and I can't do that with my eyeball. I need to get a scale or something. But I'm pretty good at the two to one. And best thing about this batch of mixing is Emily mixed it up. This is left over from her project. So if it doesn't harden, I get to blame Emily. Then I'll be wrong. And Emily's never messed up a pot of epoxy in her life. All she right. was so good at it with epoxy. Now she used a spoon and measured it.
Well, battens are now basically ready to go into the sail, uh, except they need just a little bit of sanding, you know, because you can't have any sharp edges. Uh, they're all brought out to the right length and reinforced to the end. One thing I'm going to do, a uh, little engineering for you. The way this is reinforced, this is very stiff because it's double the thickness or more than, and then this is very thin and you can kind of see it would really like to bend right here. In engineering, we would call that a stress riser and it tends to make things break. So I'm going to sand it back a little ways and feather it together and taking material away will actually make it stronger because then that same bending won't happen right here. It'll kind of gradually happen through a longer area. Anyway, little bit of sanding, we slip them into the sails and uh, we're ready to use this. Well, little kiss with a sander and now we have a nice smooth shape that'll go into the sail and doesn't have to be perfect because it's all inside, just has to have no sharp edges. And uh, we got that stress riser taken care of. Eh, more or less. We're almost done. Uh, just gonna put the battens back in the sail and we'll put it away one last time and then it'll be good until we take it sailing. This is a real winch. And as in like a fishing reel. And they've gone out of favor. I know why, because you can break your arm with one of these. The rule is, it has like a clutch back here and you lock it off and then you can just grind it. And you can go, in this case it's two speed, you can go the other way. You don't have the tail, all the stainless steel goes right onto this like a fishing reel. But, if you release the clutch um, with the handle in, the handle can take off flying in a direction you don't expect because it's a two speed. And when it whips around, it'll hit you in the arm and it, it could break your arm. It's really uh, been known to be a arm breaker. So people just got rid of them. But if you know that, and always make it the rule, winch handle comes out before you release the brake. These are great. So if you buy an old boat and has these, don't necessarily be afraid of it. Okay, second batten, first one I fixed, put that in now. One. Don't need this wind. Alright, that's two. I'm gonna get done. Ready? Hold on, wait for this wind. Well, that's it. We now have a sail ready to go sailing with. Uh, it's been a long struggle, mostly struggling the wind. We wanted to get some cool footage of the sail all up and off the boat in the dinghy, but the wind said, no, get it down right now. Uh, it's, it's winter, it's stormy time. But we got our sail done and I'm very, very happy with that. <laughs>